Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In this video, we're going to be going over crafting operations, how to set them up and what their options are, and also how to use the TSM task list, as well as restocking in order to increase your crafting proficiency and just hopefully save yourself some time when you are crafting. Now, I will say before you watch this video, if you are a brand new user to TSM, I highly recommend checking out the basic groups and operations video. There will be a link in the description, but that is the video you should watch first, or at least the first part about groups and auctioning operations. Um, for this tutorial, I am assuming that you know how to create and group items, and I'm also assuming that you understand auctioning operations. So, of course, you also need TSM installed. So, if you are somebody who needs the more basic of actually how to start groups and how to use auctioning operations, go check out that first video, and then, of course, you can come back here. Feel free, I mean, if you do not know how to do those, you can attempt to watch this video, but some of it will be confusing since you do not have those basics down. But without further ado, we are going to get right into this tutorial, and thank you so much for watching. So for this tutorial, I have set myself up some basic groups to just go through during this tutorial. And so I have set myself a simple cooking group with a few cooking items, a gear group with just a few different shadow lace pieces, as well as potions. So, you know, your groups can be however they want. And of course, if you don't know how to create that, go check out this previous video, but this is, you know, going to be our test setup. So now we're going to get right into the crafting operations, and then we'll go into the crafting menu a little bit more detailed in a little bit. So starting with the basics, of course, you go under crafting operations, create one, and since, you know, we have potions as a group, we can go ahead and let's say we call this potions. So of course the name does not matter, feel free to name it however you want. Now in terms of simplicity and options, crafting is actually pretty simple. There's only about three different things you have to worry about and most of the time you only really use two of them. So as you can see out of the restock options we have, we have three different settings. Now we're actually gonna start from bottom to top because I feel like that makes more sense. So we're gonna start with the minimum profit. So this is simply asking you, do you want you know, your items that you can be crafting to have a certain amount of profit to them? And if so, what is it? So right here, of course, we want a minimum profit. So we have that selected to yes. And this is saying that whatever we are crafting, in this case, potions, they need at least 100 gold profit each in order to be recrafted. So you have multiple options here. You can do a flat number just like this. You know, you can change it to 50. You could do like 55 gold, 55 silver, anything like that. You can just simply put in a gold amount. For example, to just give you an idea, I do this with my enchants. I simply want 50 gold profit for my enchants. So I set this at 50 gold and leave it as is. However, if you're going into the more complicated items, which, you know, require a lot more different materials and all of them kind of have different cost, you can use percentages just like your auctioning operations. So, for example, let's say you have your auctioning minimum price. You know, we can just do this real quick. Call this potions. And let's say our minimum price is 115% crafting. Like I said, if this does not make sense to you, please go and watch that previous video. But let's say your minimum price is 115%. That is basically saying that you want to sell it for a 15% gain. So you can really just take whatever's here. Of course, remove that 100% and just match it over here and do 15% crafting. The reason for this is because this is the pure profit amount. So if you had 115, that would be meaning that you had to over double your investment, but simply you're just looking for a 15% 
increase. So right there, you can set it identical to whatever your minimum price is, and that's probably the simplest way to do it. Moving on, we now have the max restock quantity, and that basically, you know, says what it needs to be said. What is the maximum items you want to restock? So if we think in terms of potions, most potions, you know, they stack in groups of 20. So if you only want to simply sell one group of items, you can set this to 20. But as somebody who sells a lot of potions, I generally set this to 200, which you know is equivalent to 10 stacks of potions. But this is simply the max amount that you want. So you can set this to 200, 50, 100, 1. Let's say you're crafting mounts and you only want 1, etc. Then, moving on, we now have the minimum restock quantity. And this means the minimum items you want to craft at a time. So what this means is, you know, we have this set at 200 potions. So, you know, if we sell one potion because somebody out of the blue just sold one potion, we run a restock. Maybe we just don't want to waste our time going ahead and just, you know, recrafting a single potion. And let's say we want to at least miss like 50 of them. You know, we want to be down to 150 in order to recraft. We can simply put this to 50. Generally, I use this in terms of the slower selling items. So if we think like, let's say we're talking about Vial of the Sands or Joy Crafting Panthers, which are mounts, maybe you want to craft four at a time. However, you don't really want to restock until you're down to two. You can set your maximum to four and then of course your minimum to two. So if you only sell one, it still won't make you restock until you're at least halfway through your stock. This just saves you time, you know, trying to swap different professions, swapping different characters. The process can get time consuming, and this is just, you know, setting your time and what's worth it to you. Because we're doing potions, honestly, I generally set this to zero. I don't care if I'm missing 13 or 50 potions, I always want 200. And that is the basic parameters. Now, we do have this simple kind of crafting override. However, I feel like most of the time, this is not very useful. In technical terms, this is basically going to replace your default craft value. So in circumstances, let's say if you were somebody back in BFA doing potions, and because in BFA you could have potion procs, so you could have the tools of the trade, so sometimes you would craft two or three potions instead of just one, you may choose to set an override of a custom craft value in order to, you know, make sure your profit is correct. 99% of the time, you will probably not use this function. However, if you choose, as you can see, you simply just type in a new craft value and it will update that for that item. Basically right here, it adjusts how TSM values crafted items when calculating profit. Most of the time, you can leave that to no. Then like the previous of all operations, you can ignore this on a certain realm or a certain character if you may choose to do so. And lastly, you can assign this to a group. So, because we named this potions, we can go ahead, click on that group, select it, and as you can see, it is now assigned. Another way to do that, if you go under groups, you can actually click on the group itself, go over here, and then you can simply just add it right here if you'd like. Since we've previously added it, it has already adjusted and you can see potions is right there. So without further ado, we are going to make two more other operations. So we have one for large meals. So I'm gonna have that set to 100 and my minimum restock quantity is going to be about 30. Or I guess we could put 33. So I want at least a third of my stock done before I go ahead and restock. Then simply like before, I do 15% crafting just to keep it simple. 
and I will assign that to my large males group. Then lastly, we have the gear group, which I will call this gear. And because this is gear, I only like to keep, let's say, five of each. And, you know, I don't really want to restock until I'm missing at least three of them. Just because I'm not trying to, you know, craft one cloak just because one sold and I still have some left over. Then let's say we mix this up a bit and we want at least 500 gold profit. Doesn't matter the item, we just want a solid 500 gold. Then we're going to go ahead and assign that group right there. So there we go. We now have three very, very simple crafting operations set up. And now we're going to be moving over to the crafting screen. So we kind of have one pulled up right here, and I'm actually going to kind of shrink that queue a little bit. But as you guys can notice, we do have this crafting queue. Of course, if you guys do not see the screen, make sure you have the TSM4 menu open. And this crafting queue is what you have set up with these crafting operations. So if you remember, we set them to make sure we restock 200 of certain items, 100 on the food, and then, you know, five of each gear item. So now what you can do is go under TSM groups. You know, you can select the groups you want to restock. In this case, it's all of our groups, just the meals, the gear, and the potions. And you just simply click the restock group. And there we go. Based on the parameters that we put in, it exactly shows us what we need to restock. So as you can see, since I already have a few cloaks on the auction house, according to these, I have two on the auction house. So it's only telling me to craft three. And then I must only have one of these two items on the auction house. So it's telling me to craft four because our main value was five. Now, we can look at this again if we want to go into our operations, go into our potions, and as you can see, we have it maxed at 200, and we can restock any amount. So because of that, as you can see, we have this little baby restock of only three potions. Since the max is 200, and we can restock any amount, I must have 197 on the auction house, so it only tells me to restock three. Then the potions of the spectral intellect is a little bit different in terms that I must only have six on the auction house. So it's telling me to craft 194. Then lastly, due to our cooking, we need to restock about 12 of the crown roast. So that is the breakdown of how this is figured out. It of course tells you the profession as well as the character that it's assuming you're going to craft this on and then you also have a total tally down here so in total it will cost us or take us about seven and a half minutes in order to craft all of these items and it will cost us about 31.5k and we are estimated profit would be about 47 or 48,000 gold so just right off the bat you can see you are investing about 31k and you're going to be over doubling your money. Of course, if you want a item breakdown, you could just simply hover this over. So per cloak, I am making 400 or sorry, 4,500 gold. And since I'm making three of them, that is a total of 13.5k profit. Hover over this one, making about 2,000 gold profit per belt, so making about 6,000 gold profit. Hover back over here, making about 82 gold per potion, so making about 16,000 gold profit. And that is simply how this restocking queue works. All right, so moving on, sweet, we have these items crafted, but how do you actually restock these efficiently? So you will notice that at the top of the screen, you will see gathering, and clicking on this, you might see something blank. 
And the reason for that is because you have to select a crafter and a profession. So if we look back over here, as you can see, Tiger Sense, which is the character that I am personally on, can restock cooking and tailoring, but I will have to be re-logging onto Revan for alchemy. So since we're on this character, I can select Tiger Sense, and there you go, it tells you exactly what you need. Then it automatically selected cooking and tailoring, but if you still don't see anything, you can either toggle off one of them, toggle off both, or have them both on. It's up to you. Also, just a quick side note, take a look at my sources. As you can see, Craft Unprofitable is there, and you never want that there, so generally you should probably remove it. That's basically saying if none of these work out, you can't buy it from a vendor, nothing on the auction house, can't craft it profitably, then you might as well craft it unprofitably. And, you know, you really never want to do that because you're not making profit. Also, just in case people do want, you can add auction house crafting to your sources and basically craft it or make your source list like this. And what this means is Let's say you need a thousand heavy desolate leather. With auction house crafting, it will now calculate if purchasing normal desolate leather to craft into heavy desolate is cheaper and more effective than simply just buying heavy desolate. So if you are somebody who, you know, uses a lot of enchanted items or you want to take that additional step, I highly recommend adding that to your sources. Of course, there's also disenchanting, which you can add if you'd like to, but I always recommend removing that unprofitable source. But after we go through that, once you have your materials to gather, it will tell you the source. So it's telling me to craft, and the craft is profitable, for these two marks, and it's also telling me to buy spices and milk from the vendor. So simply, if you wanted to, you could go over here, you know, go over here. Okay, we need spices, we need 48. There we go, and then it will check it off the list. So that is something you can do. However, if you have a very large gathering list, you can use the task list. So we click this button right here, and depending on your character or your tunes, you might see a very big or a very small list. Now, at the time of recording, the TSM task list looks like this, and you can't adjust it. However, the new TSM that will eventually be released, it is in the works. They do say that they are going to add customization and kind of simplicity to the task list, so you might have more options depending on when you're watching this in the future. But... Generally, what I do is I automatically close down cooldowns and expirations. That's basically telling me to go and log on to these characters because I have mail on them. And then cooldowns are stuff like hex weave cloth, ton of dream cloth, just those, you know, once a day cooldowns that you can do. A famous one is living steel, for example. But once you have those closed down, it should look a lot better and it will kind of tell you what you need to do. So previously we did buy the 48 spices, but it's telling me to buy from the vendor the milk. So we can go over to this vendor. You will need to be in the TSM version of the vendor. So you open this up and you can click buy and it automatically purchases this. So if you had a ton of items to list off or thousands of flux or something, click buy and it automatically does that for you. Then, of course, it's telling me to craft with tailoring these marks. So I can open up this window, takes me to tailoring, and then I can click craft. Then, simply just like that, it makes what I exactly I need. And then we just wait. There we go. So now we can craft the mark threes. And just like that, it has disappeared from the task list, and we have it all here. So if we go back under that gathering list, as you can see, it's completely blank, which means we have everything we need to craft these items. But let's say you do want to 
before actually crafting the items you want to continue on. We can select Raven, which is alchemy. And actually, I currently have all the materials necessary. As you can see, I need the 970 marrow root, as well as the 12 of each of these. And I must have that on my alchemist already. So I actually don't need to gather anything. However, in this case, if you did, let's say, let's say we want to edit this value to 500. I doubt I have that many available. Actually, I stand corrected. <laughs> I must have a lot in stock. You know what? Let's change this to 500, or sorry, 5,000. And there we go. Now it tells me I need, you know, 17,000 Marirut, as well as 3,800 vials from the vendor. So in this mass you know, restocking, all you have to simply do, select your crafters and then just kind of follow this task list and it tells you exactly what you need to do. We can set that back to normal. And since we are in tailoring, it shows this up at the top and all we have to do is hit craft next. And there we go. Now you are just crafting like normal. So we can go through here click on the next, and this is as simple as it is. Your estimated profit will go down, your time crafting will go down as you can complete more of the list, and truly it is this simple. But as you can see, you know, I did not have to go onto the auction house, figure out, okay, you know, I have one cloak on the auction house, I need to craft four. So then I have to go and, you know, find the cloak, add the correct item level, hit four, you know, and then hit Q. And that process going on to all these different characters, trying to figure out what I have and don't have will take a very long time. So using it, this simple method saves you a ton of time and a ton of effort. Now I'm not gonna do this whole crafting process since it's gonna take seven minutes, but at this point I would craft, you know, the crown roast, log out, go to my alchemist and craft those. But in the meantime, I'm going to just clear that queue. And there is one more thing I would like to show you. And that is crafting reports. So the third tab up here, if you click on it, it has two separate categories. You have the crafts, which are the crafted items. And then you have the materials for the crafted items. And so this is super awesome because it gives you a big overview of your profit. So as you know, this is a tailorer and enchanter. So let's say I was curious about potion, you know, profits. I can simply type spectral flask and there you go. It tells me I have 197 on the auction house, none in my bags and my crafting cost, the value of it and the profit. So if you are somebody who is looking for a certain item, this will give you the basic rundown. It even has the sell rate. And actually right here, if you do click on this item, as you can see, this is the restock queue and we've clicked it and now it shows up here. So if you are for some reason, you know, wanting to restock something, but you don't have it fully set up. So let's say I just wanna go ahead and quickly restock Panthers. Oops panthers but i don't have you know a crafting operation set up i can go here click one of every one and then they show up here so that is a way to of course queue things if you'd like and of course you know we crafted one of these but we can go in here and edit it to 200 and there we go so that is a nice thing with reports and of course you know, if we were looking at Panthers, this gives you a nice overall view of the profit that is currently going for. And as you can see, I have two jades, one of each of the other blue, and I'm actually completely out of the jeweled Panther. Then lastly, we do have the materials, which is a little bit more complicated. So on the basis of it, it will tell you the item, the price of the item, as well as the profession it's used in and how many you have. So for example, let's look up, you know, we can look up, let's say lightless silk. 
So right now, lightless silk, it is used in all these professions. I currently have 19,000 of it. And according to my prices, it is going for 22 gold. Now by default, if you click on this, you will see your edit material price. And by default, this material price will match your default. If you go into your general settings in slash TSM, go to crafting, you will have two default values. Now the default craft value is what I mentioned before about being able to override this. And the material cost is what we see right here. So whatever this is, which this is default, and I generally always use default, it will show up here. But in certain cases, you may want to adjust it. So without getting too in-depth, since this isn't like a custom sources tutorial, if we do want to look at Lightless Silk, the only little difference of this is that I've added in Smart Average Buy. And so if we hover over my tooltip, as you can see, the Smart Average Buy, which is the under TSM accounting, I have used or opted to use this in this string. So it will take the minimum value of any of these. I have opted to use that since Smart Average Buy is considered the average price of my current materials. So currently I have 19,000 Lightless Silk and on average, I have purchased them for about 22.42 gold. So that is what I deem worth. And, you know, that's what I want to value my item at. By default, if we remove this, make it go back to default, hit save. As you can see, this will generally always update to market value, which is that 2682 number. Of course, I just go back into here, type in smart average buy hit save, and now it's gone to that 2242 number. So of course you can, you know, you can erase this and set this to 50 gold if that's something you'd like to do. You can, you know, set 5% DB market if that's something you want to do. But this yet again is just something that you can mess around with and, you know, treat these prices however you'd like to treat them. So ultimately this comes down to personal preference and yeah, I won't go too much in it to that since this isn't the tutorial for that, but I do use smart average buy on a lot of my Shadowlands materials. But without further ado, that is basically it for crafting. Now that was probably a lot of information. So if there is still like any questions that you have, First of all, I highly recommend re-watching any sort of part of this video that wasn't super clear, and hopefully the second time around it will make more sense. But of course, if it doesn't, feel free to leave a comment down below, or if you want some more in-depth help, then feel free to join the Discord, which, you know, you can send photos, ask your questions, and ultimately figure out what is going wrong, or, you know, get some tips on what you're trying to do. Overall, this was a basics tutorial, so hopefully this did help some of you understand the crafting operations more. And of course, let me know how you enjoy this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, I've mentioned it before, but feel free to leave a like and subscribe and possibly join the Discord if you want to be a part of our community. But thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, have a good day.